Thanks to GraphX, we're able to understand the content people are sharing in social media about us or the topics and brands we care about. In this project, we want to know what people are saying about streaming services on Twitter. To start with this analysis, first, we need to get the suitable data. If you already have the data for the analysis, you can skip this first step and go directly to the upload data step. GraphX allows us to extract information from many public sources and social networks thanks to Tractor, its data mining tool. You can access guides on how to download and use Tractor in our help center. There's also specific information on how to scrape data from Twitter. For our analysis in the streaming services on Twitter, we want to get the mentions they have received during a specific period, in this case 2020, and only in English. The configuration we'll use in Tractor will be the following. We leave the search box empty as well as the from box, and we will use the to box to get the mentions. Here, we'll write out the accounts of the companies we want to use. In this case, we'll use Netflix, HBO, Prime Video, and Disney+. The links to box will be empty too, and we only want the English tweets. We can select other languages in case we want, but we'll only use English for this analysis. We also have the option of making a time frame of tweets. In this case, it's OK. We're going to use all tweets coming from January 1st, and we'll leave the until field empty, which will mark all tweets up to today. Once we have this configuration, we're going to click the search box, and Tractor will start to get all the tweets we want for this analysis, with no limit to the amount of tweets. We can leave this all the time we want, but in case we have achieved a specific number that is enough for us, we can stop the process and save this data as a CSV file. If we want to continue with the search, we can continue and Tractor will start from the point it stopped onwards. We'll stop here and we'll save our data as a CSV. We'll have it here in our desktop. Now that we already have our data, we're going to go to our GraphX account. GraphX is divided in two areas, projects and datasets. And we're going to upload our data in the datasets area. We have different options to upload the data. We can drag and drop from a folder, or we can go here to connect with different storage services or data lakes. We can see here that you have different options for integration, or we can browse on our computer. In this case, we've downloaded our data from Tractor, and we have it on our desktop, so we simply need to look for it here. We select the CSV file and start the uploading process. The time needed depends on the size of the file. In this case, as you can see, I've already uploaded a dataset for the explanation. Simply click on it and we can see that all the information is displayed in a table format, like an Excel or spreadsheet, so that we can explore our data. GraphX automatically identifies the kind of variables that we have in our dataset. Categorical, quantitative, URL, text. Now we're going to start with the analysis preparation part. As you can see, the uploading process is finished with the CSV. We can we just click we just click on it and we can see that it is displayed in the same way as the previous data. Now it's ready. And on the right side, we have different carts called recipes, which are predefined analysis that you can launch with a click. GraphX identifies the kind of data we're using, in this case, data from Twitter downloaded with Tractor. It identifies it and tells you which are the most common types of analysis people use this kind of data for. To better understand recipes, simply think of our data as ingredients. And depending on the ingredients, we can choose different recipes to cook up our analysis. That's kind of the point behind calling them recipes. In this case, we want to do some content analysis, so we simply click on it here. We then name our project, and that's it. We can click here to start the execution process. The time it takes the project to load depends on the kind of analysis we are doing, and also the amount of data we're loading into the project. For this explanation, I've already created another project, so we're going to go continue with it. When we open a project, we see the graph section. It's the first from five available sections in GraphX. We have graph, compare, trends, details, and insights. We'll see them later. The graph section is mainly divided in three main areas. The main graph, the left column with clusters and significant terms, and the right column with all the variables that we've gotten from Twitter. The graph stands out the most. It's a distribution of all the tweets from our dataset. Each point, or node, is a tweet. GraphX clusterizes this data by analyzing the content of these tweets, understanding what they're talking about, and placing each of them closer to those tweets with a similar topic. For better and more visual understanding, each cluster has its own color, as we can see here. Basically, what we're seeing here is a map in which the clusters divide the topics people are covering in social media. To better understand these topics, the left column shows the significant terms in clusters. Significant terms tell us which words or terms are the most prevalent in the cluster, 
segmentation, or selection that we have made. If we want to understand what a cluster is saying, we can click on it or select it and go to significant terms to see which words are the most important in the conversation. Here, for example, we have black, matter, lives matter, life, people, black lives. We can instantly identify that this is related with the Black Lives Matter movement. Here we have Netflix, watch, show, cancel. We can see that this is related with Netflix shows and what people are saying about them. Over here we also have app, account, service, email. We can understand that they're talking about things related with customer service, mainly from Disney Plus and Prime Video. This methodology allows us to easily understand what each cluster represents. In case we consider that these clusters are too wide, what we can do is something called reclustering. By clicking on the bottom, we will see that we can break or join our clusters depending on if they are too narrow or too wide. For example, here, if we think that they are too wide, we can break them more to make more clusters and better understand the conversation they're covering. We're going to leave it right around here, but we can mess around with it to see what we like best. Now we click OK to set our new clusters. Once we finish with the loading process, we can click on the Save button and we'll have it available anytime we want to use it. We can see that the Black Lives Matter cluster is still in the first position. We can also see the other topic about Prime Video, service, content, etc. But now we're also seeing other topics, other clusters that weren't there before. For example, here, the purple one, talks about actors and actresses. We can see that audiences are putting a lot of attention in the stars that are appearing in movies and series of these platforms. We can also see here that Disney Plus, for example, has its own cluster. It's logical for it to have its own cluster, because they've started this year in a lot of countries, so it's obvious people are talking a lot about them, and that it has its own conversation around the launch. We can see other ones that are more like replies or reactions to other tweets. We can use graph hacks to view these graphs and charts in relative terms. In exploring a bit more, we can go with this cluster and guess by the words and terms that we're using that this cluster is made up mainly of reactions. We can go here to the type of tweet and confirm that almost all of the tweets in this conversation are replies. Another interesting thing we can do is drill down on some topics to understand them in a different way. Let's clear our selection and go to any of the clusters that we want to dissect and better understand. We simply click on any of them, for example, this one, Netflix, Watch, Quarantine, Ask. Let's go to New Segmentations and click on Automatic. By doing this, what we're going to do is clusterize this cluster. Let's call it Cluster 2 and click OK. You can see that in a second you have this cluster divided into subclusters, which we can understand here. We have the list of the cluster too, and we can see that, for example, there's a topic about good things, other about cancellations and reasons for canceling Netflix, other ones about stop asking, watch, stop, which we can see is about Netflix asking their users if they're still watching after being inactive for some time. This is something you can do to understand in deeper ways any of the clusters you've made. You can do it again with any of these subclusters that you already had, and you can do it too with any of your original clusters. Now that we have a good understanding of the use of clusters, significant terms, and the graph, we're going to move to the right side, to the variables area, where we can start asking questions to our data and start segmenting it. We're going to clear our selection, and we'll start paying attention to this side. It's important to understand that every time we select any variable here, for example a cluster, the rest of the variables will be distributed in two ways. We'll have the gray areas, where we'll see the distribution of the whole of the data we have, the whole data set, and the blue areas, where we're seeing the distribution of the data that we've selected. In this case, we can select, let's say, this cluster. Thanks to this, we can start seeing answers to our main questions. For example, here, in the cluster of service, content, I'm seeing that the dates that are most important for this one are all before May. We also get information about the favorites and retweets on tweets from this cluster, as well as the distribution of the rest of the variables. Here, we can see the accounts that talk about each topic, and we can order them to see which accounts talk about this specific topic the most. We can explore this even further. Let's say you want to know the characteristics of the most popular tweets. Let's go to retweets and select the amount we want, let's say from 2000 upwards. We can see there are only six tweets included in this area, so maybe it's too little. Maybe it's okay, depending on the type of analysis we want to do. It's just an idea of a way to segment our data. For example, here in the X, we can see that we have the stats of the distribution divided by quartiles. We can select them by clicking, and we'll have all tweets included in that quartile. You can also simply drag the selection to include whatever you want. In this case, we can see that they are mainly all in this topic and concentrated in three specific dates. We can also see the accounts posting these tweets. For example, here we have Netflix. Let's look into some other variables to better understand what people are saying. 
Apart from significant terms, we also have nouns, proper nouns, and adjectives used in the tweets from our dataset. Let's say we want to understand what people are saying about Netflix. Let's go to nouns or pronouns and order them by selection so as to have the words with maximum appearances. We can see that Netflix is the most mentioned word here, along with N, related to renew N with an E. N with an E is a show Netflix has been talking about canceling and people are complaining on social media about it. We also have Arturo or Nairobi, which are characters from Money Heist or La Casa de Papel. What we're seeing here is that people are talking about these characters. We can click on them and see which adjectives are most used to describe them. In the case of Arturo, people are using adjectives like dead, sure, annoying, live, bloody, crazy. You know, we get the idea. If you've seen the show, you understand that Arturo is not really what you describe as a likable character. We can clearly see here an image of what people are thinking about him. By clicking on Nairobi, we can see that the adjectives are very different. You know, taking care not to spoil anything, we can see that she's a more beloved character and that the adjectives people are using to define her differ from Arturo's. Let's say we want to compare a couple of shows. We've already seen some characters pop up here, so by selecting for example Arturo Nairobi, we can create a segment for a later comparison with other characters. Let's go to New Segmentation and Manual Segmentation. We can name it, so let's name it Characters. And here we'll put Money Heist. We then create the segment. I can then clear the selection and go back to our selection at any time with a simple click. Let's do this with characters from other shows. Let's say we want to take a look at N with an E. We can click on N or Renew or whatever. And we can create this segment and name it N with an E to have it here. Now that we've created these segments, we can use the Compare section to compare them. The Compare section serves to compare any cluster, variable, or segmentation we've made, and we want to compare with another. Let's say we want to compare the characters we saved. Here we have our segmentation, where we put N with an E and Money Heist. Automatically, we have graphics that describe the differences or similarities between the segments. In this case, we can see that the sentiment is quite different, and we have two peaks in the graph. We understand that maybe Arturo and Money Heist is very negative, and Nairobi is more towards the center. But we also see that N has a lot more positive sentiment than Money Heist. We can also see the date of publication, where the Money Heist tweets are more concentrated towards the fifth season announcement. There are also graphs for favorites and retweets, as well as hashtags or nouns used. We have a graph here for each of the variables from our data set. We can also change the cluster over here to make any comparison we want. In case we want to analyze an ad campaign, let's say, we can use hashtags to see which ones are driving more engagement or which ones appear along with certain terms. For example, let's say you want to understand the hashtags that appear alongside Money Heist. We can click it and then go to Hashtags. Let's reorder them and analyze the main hashtags. We can also view it as a chart to make it more visual, and we can also save this as an insight. We can give it a title, like hashtags about money heist, which will create a slide in our insights tab that we can check out whenever we want. If we go to the insights tab, we can see our hashtag slide and the choice we made to have the distribution as well. The insights area is some kind of PowerPoint or Google Slides where you can click on edit to change up any slide with images or text. You can write a description, modify the title, and just kind of do whatever you want. A pretty cool feature from our insights is the following. Let's go to our graph and clear our selection, as if we were starting from zero for this project. Then, if we go to insights, we can recreate the moment in which we created our insight. By pressing the play button, the project will be adjusted to show me the moment in which the insight was created. This allows me to have control over the whole analytic process. We can also export our insights as a PDF, download them, publish it to share with external people, or embed it in a website. We can also present it directly from GraphX by going to the full screen mode. The next section is Trends. It lets us understand the evolution of any variable through time to see patterns and, you guessed it, discover trends. Here, we can compare and paint any variable. Let's say I want to compare some metrics that are important to these brands, for example, retweets. I can go to Segmented Overview, which is a type of graph and introduce all four brands. In this case, we want to compare the weekly average amount of retweets they're getting. 
We could also look for things like count or sum, but in this case, average will do. We have the option of doing it monthly, but the time spread is not that big, so weekly will do. In changing to count, we can see that the change is immediate and an average as well. By clicking here on the top right, we can add annotations. For example, here, Prime Video has a peak, so maybe you would want to add an annotation to highlight this. Let's say we know this is from a campaign or a show launch. We can mark it here and say this peak is from X series launch and save it by clicking here. We can also save it to our Insights tab or simply download our graph as a JPEG or SVG file. We can also filter with a variable from our right or left columns to see that specific data's trends. For example, here, we can simply look at the original tweets from each trend. Since there are not too many, let's try our replies. We can see which replies have more retweets or which quotes or whatever filter we want to use. This can be applied to any variable we choose, and the graph will be automatically updated. Last but not least, we have the details section. Here, we can view and segment our database. We have a visualization of our dataset similar to the one in the dataset area from the start of our project. However, here, we can filter or segment our data in a really quick way. Let's say I only want to see the people that tweeted from July onwards and were included in the top retweets. Well, we see here that that's only one person. So let's open up the selection a little bit more to include more tweets. We can then go to the author's names and here are the names of those people which could be used maybe as a campaign targeting them in particular. This is the use of details. We can download our segmented datasets in CSV or Excel files to create another project as well. This is an overview of what you can do in terms of Twitter content analysis, thanks to GraphX. However, creativity is the limit. We hope you found this useful, and in case you have any doubts, don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you for your attention.